Geek Dad Life presents Toy Geeks Live Toy Talk Show. Tonight we're going to talk about the latest toy news like NECA's big gargoyles reveal. We're also going to share our latest toy hauls and we'll have the latest edition of Stump John. All of that and more tonight on Toy Geeks. Hello everybody and welcome to Toy Geeks, the weekly live toy talk show, Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern. My name is Jay and with me as always is my good friend, John. John, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good, Jay. How are you? I am doing all right. It was my birthday yesterday, so that went well. Um, and uh, we rented out a movie theater and, and watched the movie. Um, something fun about my birthday is it's your wedding anniversary. So happy yes. anniversary to you, good sir. Thank you. Thank you. It was 10 years, 10 yeah. years. That's right. We were married the same year. So, uh, my mm -hmm. 10th anniversary is upcoming as well. But, it, but um, that means I, I'm like, I can't ever spend my, I can't spend <laughs> your birthday with you. Yeah. <laughs> Because I invited you to the movie thing, and every time I was just like, "Hey," I was like, "Oh, that's right. Yep, it's your anniversary." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but we can celebrate it here today, John. Both your anniversary and my birthday uh, here tonight on Toy Geeks uh, Talking Toys. So that should be fun. Uh, let's check the chat. A lot of stuff already going down today. Uh, Jason is here. Automaton couldn't make it to the show, but definitely wanted to say hi. So hey, Automaton. Hey. Jay Griffiths is here letting us know he already got that gargoyle swag. Uh, Riley Bob, howdly doodly geeks and geek X, geek X. Goliath in the pre order, hoping for Brooklyn next. I don't blame you there. Brad Brooks is here. Adam Smedberg. Uh, anyone surprised it was NECA, not Super 7, who revealed the Goliath? That's a great point. Let's save it for when we do get to uh, that bit. Of, I mean, it's probably the main topic for today's episode. CAF is here and changed the logo, not yellow, went to green. Interesting. Uh, Darthinian is here. Uh, someone else is doing Darkwing, so it's not pretty obvious. Super 7 doesn't have the sole claim to do the Disney afternoon <laughs> stuff. That's true. That's very true. PD Dubs is here. Hey, yo. Uh, PD Dubs uh, hopped on the Google pre order as fast as you can say. Jalapeno. Uh, indeed. Uh, I did as well. Uh, Colleen, my wife, is here. Uh, uh, let's see, Jay Griffiths. Uh, let's see, PD Dub, Jay Griffiths, Jack Knight. Uh, oh, some hand anniversary uh, shout outs for you, John. Um, Nelson, uh, not turn, but where's the remote? I don't know. <laughs> you to figure that one out for yourself. Blue <laughs> thing is here. Uh, oh, Riley Bob, five dollars. Happy birthday, Jay, and anniversary, John. Sundays for the geeks. Well, thank you there, Riley. Thank you, Bob. Riley Bob. Kind. Uh, Dartherian, Nita Steel Clan, Xanatos. Can't argue with you there. Uh, Justin Moan, this show is still good to be honest. It has it has aged very well. <laughs> is that gargoyles or toy geeks? I, I know. Okay. Either I way. took it as toy geeks right away. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't been around long enough to be like is it still good or is it bad like have we jumped the shark already john like what was our jump the shark moment i think that's i don't think we have it yet yeah it'll happen the <laughs> sharks are right behind john it can happen at any time that, that uh, spins right there yes. <laughs> uh master hoarder is here bmm 1984 jump in general hello from nc my second visit to the channel great job guys enjoying the channel thank you jump in general uh, always good to see another fellow NC toy geek. Uh, Justin, happy birthday. Thank you, Justin. Happy birthday and anniversary, Brad. Thank you. Thank you. Both Thank you. Are still good. Thank you, Jay, <laughs> for both Gargoyles and uh, toy geeks. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for that reassurance, Jay. <laughs> uh, and Nightmare is here as well. So a great crew of toy geeks um, to talk about all things toy geekery. Now, uh, kind of housekeeping here, right off the top, uh, just kind of saying it again, the upcoming Hasbro Pulse Fan Fest, April 9th. So instead, uh, uh, this Sunday, we will not be doing a live show. Uh, we might be doing, we we'll, might have something Sunday night at 9 o'clock, but it is Easter Sunday next week, and uh, we will not be able to do a live show. So we'll probably do our Hasbro uh, Pulse Fan Fest predictions as a special episode that will post uh, on Sunday. So be on the lookout for that. But we will be back live, not the following Sunday, but on April 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern after all of the festivities of Hasbro Pulse Fan Fest. 
John and I will be breaking down all of the details. And it's very well possible it could be as boring as this <laughs> reveal. <laughs> like, what? Come on, Hasbro. Like, they were all like, oh, tune in for the big news tomorrow. Oh, you're going to want to be have your phone ready. Yep. Here's another Grogu nobody wants. I mean, it looks cool. Yeah, but, but <laughs> that was, it's... You, you can't. That's like crying wolf. You can't be like, no, oh, make sure you have your internet on. <laughs> so hopefully it's not like that for the Hasbro Pulse fan fest. Uh, they, I mean, they're talking uh, Fortnite, GI Joe, Transformers, a whole bunch of their properties. Uh, they're going to have updates for the whole day. Uh, and uh, John and I will be recapping it and talking about it the night uh, or that night following uh, all of those panels. If you've been to one of these before with John and I, it's what started this show as a live show. We did it for PowerCon way back in, I think, August. And we yep. also did the Hasbro Pulse Con, which was a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, we'll be doing it for the Hasbro Pulse Fan Fest as well. So be on the lookout for that. April 9th. Be there or be square. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see Peter does I was watching Shart review Unicron today. Holy cow, that's one heck of a toy. Uh it it is insane. Uh yeah, that thing is massive. Uh insane. Um <laughs> Justin says, I meant Gargoyles <laughs> for the show. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I, it's on Disney Plus, and you know, I this whole news and everything's like I need to I need to re I need to watch that with the kids or something. That, that that's mm -hmm. one to watch again uh insert groundhog day meme so hasbro is releasing grogu again great call out i should have done that <laughs> but you know uh this this old nugget but yeah well hasbro's releasing a grogu again uh yeah absolutely that they have they have earned that i will i will have one uh, uh ginned up uh, for next time <laughs> there <laughs> but again like why the big pomp and like again it was like they sent emails out to everybody mm -hmm. all that, that and they have to know that it's a different clientele for the hasbro pulse than just generic star wars fans yeah right? I, yeah i bet i bet that was going to be shown in like the kids department for toy fair this year mm -hmm. but they're like, like well let's just sell it as the collector market instead that Mattel is also trying to do for a four hundred dollar version. Thing, is that thing still on the uh, Mattel creation site? <sighs> I don't. I don't even know. I completely. Let's take a look. <laughs> I like just shut that thing out of my brain. Because maybe, maybe Hasbro was like, "Oh man, Mattel's stealing all our thunder with this four hundred dollar Grogu." So we gotta, <laughs> we gotta respond to this. Um, let's see. So here it is. Uh, why is it? There we go. What if? Uh, what a precious little creature explore project. It was supposed to only be available for a week. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, so it did sell out. Right. Meaning they just sold enough to make it and then they just shut it off. <laughs> or, or <laughs> we're going to see a whole bunch of these at Ollie's in a year. <laughs> yep. <laughs> $20. $29.99 at Ollie's and Big Lots. Be on the lookout. Um, all right, but uh Darthinian has a good point here, but hey, it's not the child anymore. So yeah, we got we got that going for us. Um, but anywho, uh Jamie Vine, yay, I made it. You made it, Jamie. You made it in time. Um, all right, so uh oh, old school is here. Old school shinobi's in the house. Uh Jay Gers, the only people I know with active pulse memberships are planning to not renew them. They need to do something to save that sinking ship. Yeah, I agree. And again. I don't know. It's just it's a different it's a different type of toy. It's a, it does look like a great toy, but it's a it's not a it's not an adult collector. You know, like oh, I need to have it kind of thing. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, to use the the Hasbro Pulse, the email list, all of that stuff. Um, it's just like, it's, yeah, it's baiting big time. Yeah. Exactly. And. Again, it looks pretty, and you're right. It is the type of toy that they would kind of have featured at Toy Fair. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's just like that's not. I don't know. I, I they don't know what to, they don't know what they want to do with Hasbro Pulse. Is it adult collector uh, focused, or is it just whatever they want to put up there? 
Um, and yeah, and I think Jay Griffiths is right. You know, a lot of people are probably not going to renew. Um, there's a lot of people that had like the free pulse membership just have to pay for it. And yeah, we'll see. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I saw the new Grogu announcement and thought of the price is right. San- uh, sad sound. Well, we have one very similar <laughs> copyright free. <laughs> um, yeah, indeed. Sad tra- uh, trombone. Indeed. Uh, for for that announcement, because again, it's just like you're so. I was like, okay, all right. Well, what is it? Good, what could it be? <laughs> nope. Uh, Kuku Sun, uh, Kuko Sun, just made it. Welcome, welcome. We're just having our, our daily uh, God Hasbro why moment. <laughs> uh, Hasbro should do all pre-orders on Hasbro Pulse member and then ship regular stock to Walmart. BMM, you you are hitting the nail on the head here, and I think we've been feeling this way for a long time. And I've I've had the Hasbro Pulse membership since last Toy Fair, mm-hmm. and mainly because you know, like they had the uh, the new Toronto one, and they had all this Ghostbuster stuff. I'm like, oh, I want to make sure that you know if I'm going to get, I'm going to get it from here. And then they had some of the GI Joe stuff, and every single time if there's a normal retail release, you could find it in Walmart or anywhere else well before it even shipped from Hasbro Pulse. Yep. So it's just like, what's the point? What are you paying 50 bucks for? Not much. Uh, the Pulse is weak. Rather have a membership <laughs> at Barnes & Noble. <laughs> Woo, that's saying something. Because I, I, I don't b- shop at Barnes & Noble often, but when I do, they bug the hell out of me for that $10 Barnes & Noble. <laughs> like, nah, man, I'm good. I, I maybe buy a book from here once a year, maybe mm-hmm. a toy once in a while when I want to pay three times normal retail price. But I'm good. I don't need it. I, don't need I think it. the only thing that's going to save Pulse or could save Pulse is if they had a line that was specifically sold just there. Like if they, yes, say if like they reissued Mask, yeah, it, it probably you know it it would struggle at at retail because mm-hmm. it's not you know um, it doesn't have a, a broad spectrum of collectors. Sure, you know it's 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 a very niche niche market yeah but if it was only sold on pulse it would it would be you know gangbusters yeah yeah like um yeah you're right like a mask exclusive like same way that manny collector and again i think we kind of look through that with rose colored glasses sometimes with motu classics and stuff mm-hmm. and it's interesting now with origins coming out and everyone like classics was second come like it's just it's amazing it's the best thing ever and mm-hmm. while i agree it is the definitive motu line it had a lot of problems and a lot of frustrations Yeah, when it was being released on Maddie Collector. Mm-hmm. Um, but that model or that kind of thing of like being having that exclusive line for it, I think you're right. I think it is the thing that could, well, makes it, makes it worthwhile anyway. Because right now it's just like, hey, you want to get something that you're going to be able to find at retail two <laughs> months later and pay extra for it? Hasbro <laughs> Pulse is right yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um but anyway uh some people think hasbro goofed and the announcement was meant for the Fortnite announcement uh, maybe it was a, it was a it was a goof that is for sure uh jack knight says being 100 agree same with target exclusive pulse first then stores yeah yeah move gi joe to pulse exclusive you know that would i i'd be down for that yeah it would it would I'd function be. so much better yeah because then you could then you can run full pre-orders like kind of what they've done with some of their exclusives and stuff for pulse Mm -hmm. if they had them all in there and they could just do the orders that would be so much less stressful than the target releases because and i think um uh toy guru scott knightlick i think said it well where they probably expected this full you know um uh, plano of just gi joe stuff and these adult collector figures but they have no space for them. So they only have like this one peg for maybe two pegs for these G- uh, GI Joe classified figures. Yep. And they're just impossible to find in retail. So just, just use Pulse for that. I think, yeah, that's a great call out there. Um, mm-hmm. And a lot of people are with you too on the mask line, a, a mask Pulse exclusive. Um, uh, uh, Brian, Bob, I guess we didn't really need to have our finger on the Pulse. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
uh, old school Shinobi. What's that one twenty four scale Star Wars line call that seems to be doing well? And somebody mentioned last week that would be perfect format for mask. Um, is that that Galaxy Hero or whatever that is line? Yeah, it's the something like that. Figures? Those figures are smaller than mass figures, which is crazy. But anyway, so that's that. But still, we will be here April 9th, 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, I think is what that's called. Uh, Your guess is as good as mine. It's EST for Hasbro Pulse Fan Fest. And again, we assume the good reveals are going to be that day. <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed fingers crossed maybe maybe the ghostbusters budget will have a budget <laughs> i don't think they're gonna do anything for ghostbusters i think the stuff that we got the kenner stuff kenner classic yeah. yep that's the news there because on their their uh, press release for this event um there is no mention of ghostbusters it's fortnite transformers power rangers gi joe marvel and star wars um, starts at 11 a.m. EST, um, which again, I think that's EDT, but you know, I'm not gonna split hairs there. Uh, but we, whatever it is, whatever is revealed that day, um, looks like uh, G uh, Snake Eyes, some Snake Eyes stuff will finally be talked about there. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, should be fun, but it is on the Hasbro Pulse YouTube channel and uh, starts at 11 a.m. Eastern. And then uh, we will be recapping it all 9 p.m. So be here for that. All right, John. Uh, no Kenner Files, not yet. But hey, if they're doing the Ecto-1, there's a good chance. There is a yeah. good chance. Mm -hmm. All right. Ooh, night this, this is a good idea for Nightmare. And Hasbro All-Stars line with six-inch versions of ROM, masks, characters, and characters from the other Hasbro lines would be perfect as a Pulse exclusive. I mean, if they have the rights to it, why not? Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, but anywho, all right. So we like to start each show with a little thing called recent toy hauls, where we share our recent toy hauls. Um, I do. do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first, John? Um, I'll go first. That's that's cool. All right. Um, share your picture here. Yeah, you can throw the picture up there. Doop -ba -doop -doop. Boom. Boom. So Auto two. Yep. Thank you to UJ and Gary, our friend, secured me wave two, three, and all but one of wave four. What are you missing on four? You're missing uh, Ninjor. Ninjor, okay. Yeah. And then the only fi figures that aren't in that picture is She Ra and Roboto, because um, I forgot they were behind me when I stacked everything up. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Baroness with the coil bike. You you found for me months ago, months ago, forever ago. Yes, but we finally, I finally got, we finally got together this yeah. Thursday, and I picked everything up from you. <laughs> it was so long in the making. It was weird because just like you said, I was like, wait, have I not seen you in person in almost a year? Like God, like this this pandemic timeline is really screwy. I know. Like, There's no way it's been that long. It's like, yep. No, it was like Mother's Day. I was like, what? Yeah, we haven't seen each other since Mother's Day last year. Um, which is nuts because I did not <laughs> think it was that long at all. <laughs> at all. Um, but uh uh but yeah, and then uh you got some uh, Ghostbuster stuff here too. Yeah, um, so I was at my Walmart on um uh, your Walmart so you, yes for like a nickel, yes, <laughs> on Friday. Uh, and they had just they had wheeled out some pallets in the toy department so you know i'm peeking around and i yep. see one like you know one corner of the box and it says kenner retro gh and i'm like well mm -hmm. duh you know what else is that gonna be <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so um i went back saturday and i figured maybe they unloaded the pallet mm -hmm. but of course they didn't and somebody had moved that box up to the top of the pallet, cracked it open. So I'm like, ooh, you know, I'll I'll take a look in there. Yeah. So sure enough, I figured maybe it would be fearsome flushes and um Oh, you think already it would have been? That'd have been crazy. It could have been. I mean, my, my store, if you remember, got them in really early. That's super right. early. It's true, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was these, it was these guys, and so I scanned them and they were four bucks. So four I, bucks. I wasn't gonna let these guys go for four dollars. So they'll stay with they'll stay with me. They'll be in my collection. 
Nice. Be. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's great. I I love how they're just kind of they're just there. There's not empty pegs. Mm-hmm. Like they're still there. I hope it's an evergreen thing. I hope the more stuff they introduce just kind of becomes a more full fledged, just like regular retail line. Um, right. So I really hope that's and same. And it's really neat because in some cases in Walmart, it's like the Motu stuff is next to the Ghostbuster stuff, and it's just like <laughs> slowly becoming this like mm-hmm. you know time machine. <laughs> yes, it's like if you happen to go down that perfect aisle and you see yeah. like the the Motu Ghostbusters. Yeah, those G1 headmasters in the vintage style boxes. Yes, yes. The, the retro Joes, even though the cards aren't great yeah but it's still like you walk down and like you'll hear like <laughs> crazy music and it's like did i just walk walk in a time portal <laughs> you just you, you walk in you're like <laughs> yes that's, that's exactly what i was thinking <laughs> it, is uh, true, though. it is true though it's really cool it's really mm-hmm. and then uh, i mean and you can walk down a couple of the others and you see like the care bears mm-hmm, in those in yep. those vintage style boxes mm-hmm crazy it's crazy yep. i didn't get to open up any of these figures yet though tomorrow nice to tomorrow, tomorrow today yeah yeah wow. i didn't spend any time in the toy room this weekend they just kind of came home put down on the put down and that was it yep yep um yeah i feel it's really busy week um i had i had all of way four i haven't opened the box yet but i have all of way four here here that i intend to open and review um and then the one that i showed in the picture i'll show in my toy halls um and just yeah, so busy. I haven't got a chance to do a video on them yet. But I did do my video for the Ram Man, which I don't actually have here. But if you've seen the Ram Man video, a mm-hmm. uh, uh, lot of fun, really cool figure. Looks like uh, a great figure. Yeah, it's 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 really really good. Um, and I was you know uh, really impressed with how well that one turned out. Um, let's see, uh, Baroness is crazy expensive now. How much is old Baroness going for? I don't even know. I don't know. Um, I don't know if she was going. I mean, months ago she was going for like eighty bucks or something like that. But all right, I that, haven't checked. It's time. Let's let's just do it. Let's just yep. see how much is it going for. Let's look on the old eBay. Aaron <laughs> asks. It's gotta do it sometimes. Uh, uh, G I Joe classified. Aaron S. Two hundred and four dollars. No way. Woo. What's com- what's completed? Oh, this one's bit being bid on now for one thirty five. Oh my god. Damn, John, you might just want to flip that one. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not gonna. It'll it'll go in the in the the case with the rest. Uh, where's where's the thing? I keep moving this all the time. Where's the sold? There we go. Sold items. Let's see. 135 open, 177 sealed. Holy moly. Wow. The thing is, you know they're going to re-release this thing. Maybe not yeah. with the bike, but nobody really wants the bike, right? I don't think the bike is that great I looking. I sell my old box for 1750 There you <laughs> go. I want to know. I just want to meet the guy or, or lady uh, that, that bought <laughs> the Baroness box. <laughs> Nothing in it. A Baroness box. Yep. For seventeen fifty. <laughs> well, I mean, if you get her for like loose for like a hundred dollars, and you, uh, you buy it for seventeen fifty, you're still doing all right. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But I still you- have. I keep all the boxes. Maybe I should sell the Baroness box. There we go. I, you know, put that towards the old. Uh, th- <laughs> you know, I was trying to organize a lot of my my junk on friday yeah and i realized how many boxes i keep i gotta i gotta break this habit it's bad right it's taking up way too much space way too much space like i need a purge Mm -hmm. um and again if maybe i could sell some of these extra boxes uh you know it might be worth it it might be worth it um (laughs) um dang son that coil though yeah yeah it's and again, I it must have been at least six months ago. I I, I found that I found one for you, for Gary, mm-hmm. and for me. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it was that was a fun. That was all in a week, I think. Uh, I saw Ninja at Target last week and bought him. I'm not collecting Motu Origins, but Ninja was one fig I never had as a kid. Listen, that's how it starts. Old school. I can see it. You're on the precipice. Yep. Because oh. <laughs> when you got Ninja on the shelf and you're like, ooh, Clamp Champ would look good next. 
look good next to Ninjor because they came out the same year. Mm-hmm. You know, they're on the same art. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. it's like, ooh, you know, the King Randor is going to look boss next to those the same year. <laughs> it looks good. Uh, but then you get King Randor. Now you need He Man because you can't have He Man and King Randor separate. Then you need Skeletor at that point. Yeah. It's, it would be awkward if it's you a slippery slope you're on. And then you're like, well, they're only 15 bucks. It's a pretty good price for figures these days. <laughs> uh, uh, throwback to my way to Origins finally shipping from Big Bad. Uh, Big Bad shipping a lot of stuff right now. That's where I got my my way for. Um, and uh, my and the the uh, Ram Man. Um, just hopefully the rest of the stuff starts to come soon. Master Hoarder, awesome haul. I agreed, awesome haul. Uh, John's luck. I would not be surprised. Four dollar <laughs> steal. Uh, in reference to my nickel uh, comment there. Uh, I took my O2 Origins uh, He Man scholar straight off that pallet when they were first released. <laughs> hey, listen. Sometimes you got a pallet dive. You know, if it's there, yeah, you gotta take it. Uh, that's John's version of Monday Night Date Night. Open all his toys he bought over. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Works. Will Cara Dune go up or down? She seems stable. Uh, I, I sold mine. I sold mine for like one eighty four. I think right. Uh, Black Series Cara Dune. Um, and. Oh, she's actually come down a little bit. So mm-hmm. she has come on down. And, and, and you could have seen that one coming just because they made a ton of her. They made a ton yeah. of that figure. It wasn't that rare of a figure. Um, so, yeah, look at that. Uh, you could buy now for 140 buy now for $129. Uh, so my guess is the sold price is cheaper than that. Um, let's go to old items a 149 but that was march 28th Interesting. you get to buy it now for less than that 110 so maybe some people are buying without knowing yeah you get up to 224 that's united kingdom um so 117 on bid so yeah it is definitely come down i i i know i sold mine for 184.99 or something like that um so the care dune is coming down my guess is it'll probably come down more Mm-hmm. I, I bet you it'd probably sit around 80 eventually. Yeah. The hype, the hype is coming down on it. Mm-hmm. Plus a lot of, a lot of people still had stock of her, you know, like, yeah. Um, like mom and pop shop dealers, you know, like our friends that have wholesale licenses that had solid cases of black series because there's not a lot of toy shows. Mm-hmm. They got the inventory and kind of sat on it. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, all right, my toy house. Oh, what did I get this week? Let's see. All right, so first up, I think I talked about this on uh, Screen Geeks, but yes, my Land Shark came in, and this was a uh, my first uh, Amazon o- order. I think Toy Shiz posted up that was on Amazon, uh, so I, I picked it up there, uh, shipped really quick. Uh, video is next for this one. I've shot most of the footage. Uh, I just need to kind of get it across the finish line, so be expect to see that maybe Tuesday night. Um, so definitely be on that. Look out for that. Make sure you hit that like button when it, it comes up. But uh, overall, really, really dig this vehicle. Um, and a lot of neat details about this one that I will share in my full K with you. <laughs> but still pretty sick. I showed it to you because uh, I had it out yeah. already when you came over on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Got uh, to play with it for a little bit. Yeah. it's It really is awesome. It's cool. It's really cool. Um, and then another thing I'm planning for for the channel uh, is doing more reviews or just kind of uh, kind of history of uh, Kenner's real Ghostbusters. It's my favorite line of all time. The first website I ever made was about you know studying and sharing history of that line. Uh, so I picked up the 1988 uh, Toy Fair catalog for Kenner. Um, so a lot of great stuff in here, uh, including uh, Always Sisters, Bone <laughs> Age, Silverhawks. Uh, mask split seconds, uh, sky commanders. So if you don't know the, the, the toy fair guides are like probably one of the best, you know, resources to see unproduced stuff. Cause mm-hmm. this was where they were kind of just show again. It was like their toy fair. Like what were they going to, you know, make and produce, um, and uh, I have the 89, the 90 and 91 and 91 is famous for, 
Ghostbuster collectors that had a lot of the unreleased stuff in the 91 catalog. Um, uh, but still, like all the Silverhawk stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I love Bone Age, too. That's one of my favorites. Bone Age is so cool. Um, I wish there was more of it so I could add some to my collection. Mm -hmm. I just never come across Bone Age. Like, I feel like I never see it. No, I I think I found one set ever at, at a show. And you got to be careful, too, because those clips that hold everything together are so fragile. Mm hmm man they're awesome um so uh i needed the 88 and i need the 87 um some sky commanders oh there it is that mail away i got that <laughs> <laughs> was that last week or the week before you shared that i think that was like three weeks ago um but yeah uh just really cool stuff um but yeah you know, I really wanted it for, you know, the real Ghostbuster stuff. So it's part of these history things. Again, Fright Features figures didn't come out until 1988. So it was, the, it was like the next wave of figures uh, from them. But it's just, it's really neat because you get to see like the prototype pictures. These are all like prototypes. So they're like hand painted uh, prototypes, which is always cool. You could see some variations on that. Um, and again, you know, Ecto 2 is going to be new in 88, the, the Highway Haunter. Um, just really cool stuff. So anyway, great resource if you are, you know, going into the and for me, I just love all the plano, uh, the planograms. Oh, that's so nice. Just like, you know, it's just you can just see what the, the aisles maybe would have been like at a fully stocked store. So uh got that one this week. Really pumped to get that one. Uh, it's super glossy. It looks like a new book. They hold up really well. The Kenner ones hold up really well. Cause I have so yeah, I have 88, 89. Uh, 90 and 91. Um, so, you know, you'll see it a lot of times, like when I'm doing the, uh, the video review and I'll like cut to pictures. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. Like when I'm talking about the history of it or whatever. And it's usually from those books. So they're really good resources for that. Next thing I have wanted this for a long time. I've seen it at toy shows a bunch of time. Usually this one guy always has like a, a hot wheels cars and stuff, but he always like wants too much for it. And I was like, ah, maybe one day. But anyways, John, you got this for me for my birthday. Really pumped about this. Um, it's the Johnny Lightning kind of scenes or a silver screen machines uh, scenes. But it has the little diorama with the firehouse headquarters and the kind of updated new version of the Ecto-1A from Johnny Lightning. And what I love about the Johnny Lightning one is... It's more accurate than the Hot Wheels one because it's, it has the Ghostbuster logo on the hood, which the um, normal one didn't. I just think the Johnny Lightnings are generally, I feel like, a, a higher quality than than Hot Wheels. Yeah. Even the, those premium Hot Wheel ones are nice, but again, mm -hmm. this thing looks awesome. That was a really nice birthday present. So thank you again, John, for that. And again, I have the original first release of the uh johnny lightning ecto 1a yep uh but the new one has like a new like the light bar is all like a, a lot of it's upgraded so really pumped um to now have this one in my collection so thank you john for that you are very welcome um and then last but not least this is a super hard to find and rare toy line uh and you know, everyone knows my love of Disney Afternoon. We're going to talk about a Disney Afternoon show in just a minute. Uh, and the thing, about, the funny thing about Disney Afternoon is there wasn't a lot of toys uh, for it back then, even though it was a really popular cartoon or cartoons. But Playmates did a toy line for Darkwing Duck, only one series, plus a couple of vehicles. And they did one for Tailspin uh, figures and a couple of vehicles. I have had the Sea Duck and the whole line. Uh, for a while now. I got them, God, well over a decade ago. Um, but I was missing one vehicle from that set. Um, and it was the Don Carnage uh, Triplane Terror. I forget what it's called now. I thought my head. But anyway, uh, Crow Mag Toys, our favorite local uh, toy store, got a set of the Tailspin figures as well as the Sea Duck and uh, the Don Carnage plane in super like mints almost unplayed with conditions still has the the missiles like the, oh. the 
it still is like nowhere <laughs> on it. I put my Don Carnage figure in there already. Um, and again, they're just the, the that Sea Duck was the only one. The one that I saw in Cro Mag was the first time I've seen another one since I got mine. And again, that was well over a decade ago. Um, mm -hmm. And I have not seen an open one of these ever in my toy hunting. Uh, I've seen mints like in box ones sell, sold, but um, I wanted one that was open and complete. Uh, so, you know, uh, Nikki, who's one of the employees that works there, um, she knows that I collect the the Playmates uh, Disney Afternoon stuff. And she messaged me saying, hey, we got this stuff in. Do you like want to do you want to buy it? And I was like, yes, like I need it. Um, I will. I will be over there first thing in the morning. So I was really pumped. So this was like my birthday present to myself. That's awesome. I seen it on their Instagram. They posted the a shot of the collection together. Yep. And I thought to myself, I wonder if he's going to go get that now that he's seen it. But they called you on it first. They did. <laughs> that's where it. That's where it helps to make friends with uh, the toy shops, ladies. That's a the pro tip. Um, one, just be kind to people anyway, because it's the right thing to do. But then also, if they know what you like, they may be like, hey, I know you like this stuff. Mm -hmm. Got that in. Also, it helps when you literally live five minutes from the store. So I can be like, I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, it's it's really cool. Um, Iron Vulture, there you go. Uh, uh, it, it just it's again, it's so hard to find them. And I was just like, that's it. So the last vehicle I need. For the Playmates Disney Afternoon, I have everything, all the figures from Tailspin and, and uh, Darkwing Duck. Now I have all the vehicles from Tailspin. The last thing I need is the Rat Catcher from the uh, Darkwing Duck. Uh, to, uh, the Rat Catcher is the motorcycle with the little sidecar. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So it's always nice when you can add, you know, your personal grails. Like it's probably not like when you make a list of the top 10 toy grails of all time. That probably wouldn't be on the list. But for me, this was a personal grail. So I was really pumped mm. uh, to, to get that. Plus, it's 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 the last of that series. Mm -hmm. So it's like that finishes it. You're, you're done. But it's kind of like, oh, man, I'm done. What am I going to get next? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's, true. that's why there's still the rat catcher out there. So that's mm -hmm. really, to me, that's when I'll, I'll feel like it has been complete. But... Um, anyway, and the thing is the sea duck they have there. And again, if you're interested in it, it's chromagtoys.com. It may still be up there, maybe sold already. Uh, but it is so mint. I almost was like, well, maybe I should sell my sea duck and get that sea duck. Cause that one's even mintier than mine. It's like, no, I have, I have a history of the sea duck found it like at least 14 years ago. So I was like, nah, we have a connection. We have a bond. I can't just... I can't just throw them out like that. it's slightly nicer than mine so i was like no i'm keeping mine I'm keeping it anywho uh throwback to all the guys at sailfish comics Winston are so nice always working on vintage stuff um okay the thing is like a lot of people that own these little like yep. toy shops and stuff they're fans too like they're collectors too so yep um brett brett at sailfish is a super super guy um and uh and then kind of related to that, I'm getting uh, my first vaccine tomorrow. So uh, toy shows will be back for me <laughs> very soon. I'm really excited about it. Because uh, I'll, I'll def I think if, I think I'll have both vaccines done by then. But the June show, I'm almost 100% going to be setting up again uh, to, to sell stuff. So fingers crossed. Awesome. <laughs> mutant variant of the thing that's <laughs> <laughs> anyways all right it's time john oh snap we're running long let's get to the news and then we'll maybe oh, close boy. with we'll close yeah. with uh, stump john all right let's let's just get to the main meat and potatoes here <laughs> disney's gargoyles wow that's all. I, I mean, I, I it happened right as you were uh, stopping by uh, to my house. Yep. And I was like, have you seen this yet? And you're like, no, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I had no idea about it. It just, I don't know. Like, I did not expect this from NECA Toys. I would expect this from Super 7. I think a couple of people here made the comments about it. Mm -hmm. 
But wow. So this thing is eight inches tall. So it's not tiny. Multiple kind of looks like kind of face. Um, you can swap the faces out essentially. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like that. Or maybe it's a head and you swap the hair out. I don't know. Um, but like the Goliath figure, like if you could picture the perfect gargoyles Goliath figure in your head, it would be this figure. Yep. And um, like, wow, NECA toys, like bravo, just round of applause <laughs> for, for this because holy moly, this is fantastic. And then... And then you look at the price, thirty two ninety nine. That's that's way less than what we predicted yeah. when, when we were talking about this. Yeah. Uh I think so. Well, maybe it'd be fifty bucks, you know, they maybe it was bigger. Or maybe it's just small, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's six inches or something. No, it's eight inches. It's a Disney licensed figure, and it's thirty two ninety nine on pre order right now. And it's not even exclusive either. So yep. it's on you got Toy Story, Entertainment Earth, it'll be, you know, all the other retailers. So we should be happy it's not Super Seven. Because if it was Super Seven, it would probably be fifty or sixty dollars. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um now it is a NECA figure, and I think uh <laughs> uh some people have said it here. Maybe what's the likelihood? Uh or maybe no one said it, but it's is a NECA figure, so there are QC issues mm -hmm. that come with NECA figures, yep. breaking and stuff like that, even paint issues. But I don't know. It seems like the paint is pretty simple here. Like there's not much to screw up, really. I think, or the, right. not like the Tune Tune Turtles, which have so many QC issues. Um, but if they can do this on par with their movie turtles stuff, like holy moly, this is going to be. Hopefully, they, it's successful. Um, because if you want to talk about like what's a what's a property that would be really cool as an adult collector toy line that hasn't been done yet, um, it would it would, gargoyles would have to be up there, right, on that yeah. list. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Because it's it, amazing, it yeah. really is. Like, look at that wingspan. What is that? That's going to be, like, at least... Like, if that's 8 inches, or is that 12 inches wide there? At least? I bet I bet it's, like, 15 or 16. Like, ugh. I'm just in love with this thing. Uh, <laughs> and again, like, so I immediately pre-ordered it. A lot of people have already said they've pre-ordered this thing. Um, but it was a big surprise. And... I think somebody else made the point here because there's that cool Darkwing Duck kind of premium figure that some random toy company is making. I can't remember the name now. Yeah. Um, and and now NECA doing this. And I would have expected this to be a Super 7 release. Yeah. Especially with their Disney line. Yep. Yeah, because they're doing the Disney Ultimates figures. And the same. I figured this would have been all over Super 7. Yeah. But maybe, you know, I do wonder if Super 7 was optioned to do it mm -hmm. because, you know, just having the ease of the license in place already or a working agreement with Disney. Mm -hmm. But then again, Super 7 is working on so many things right now. Maybe they'd just be too busy. But here's my question. If you're Super 7, how do you pass on this? Not this. I mean, again, I think the ones they did are cool. Like, uh, was it Prince John and yep. you know, that Sorcerer Mickey and um, Pinocchio? And I'm blanking on the other one. Um, but so yeah, I, I don't remember. They're. I mean, it goes are timeless characters. They're timeless Disney characters. But the thing about this license is, it's a beloved Disney afternoon property. It is uh, an animated series that was of that Batman animated series kind of um, next level animated series that took, right. you know, what is a, you know, a kid cartoon to like this. Uh, uh, um, it was very, it was like new, like new R. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I would say, you know, Gargoyles is part of that 
Batman animated series, X-Men animated series, you know, just like of that 90s, you know, early yep. 90s era, just really high quality serialized cartoon. Um, that So you have that. So it's, a, it's that kind of property that has a lot of nostalgic pent up demand that they haven't really it hasn't been like done to death. Mm -hmm. And they're just really cool character designs. Like even if you're not a Gargoyles fan, the character designs are really cool. Yeah. This figure will fit in with anything that you collect. Right? Right off the bat. Um, so that's nuts. That's yeah. I I so kudos to NECA for doing this. Um and uh uh I again, yeah, hopefully it's easy to find. Uh the I think you know, going through here, going through the comments, Brian Flynn mentioned in a recent interview that they have a big reveal for around S and San Diego Comic Con. Uh, well, they beat him to the punch here. They beat him to the punch. Um, <laughs> I, I, this is huge. This is huge. Uh, Leo Convoy's uh, reviews or Leo Convoy's reviews uh, gave five dollars. Thank you, uh, Thank Leo. You. Uh, the question is, will it snap right out of the box? I think we've mentioned that NECA has its QC issues. Yeah. I feel like they maybe have gotten better than maybe a couple of years ago. But at 32.99, 99, 34, 99, 32. I'd be, yeah. I've, I'm really worried about the backwards knee, backwards ankle yep. design, you know, yep. just supporting the weight of yeah. the, the upper body like that on, on yep. NECA joints. But you know, I think I read that it comes in a, like a display window box, so you could display it mm -hmm. maybe with wings, the, the wings spanned out like that. Yeah. If that's possible, awesome. Yep. Um, but I got a feeling, you know, just be careful with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And and so I hopefully, to Leo Convoy's point, I hope it doesn't snap right out of the box. But again, this is a mass retail release. If it does, hopefully you just get another one. Yeah. And to me, and but I and Sam Newsman says so bring up Nick's QC issues. Absolutely. Uh they they <laughs> it's like but like again, I, I I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. NECA does have QC issues. I mean it's one of the big reasons why I've not done the tune line. The movie line is so freaking incredible that you know I, I but again that one has I, to me at least I just have not seen as many QC issues with the tune. I'm sorry, the movie line even mm -hmm. though the accessories do break just by looking at them, but it's just like just a byproduct of how they're made. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Print rabbit said, I wish it was more accurate. Not a fan of the exaggerated musculature, particularly on the legs, but I still like it overall. I mean, I, I could see that I get that point, but to me, it's, it is kind of that mm, it's kind of hitting that or threading that needle of, Hmm. Maybe like the the Motu classic, so it's just like it looks like your idealized version or like your real version of that character. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's sort of like if if you saw a Batman animated figure with all that detail on it, you would feel you know it would be the same same idea, except yeah. they would have super skinny legs, you know, from <laughs> from top to bottom. <laughs> uh he doesn't skip leg, leg day not once <laughs> that's right riley bob you don't want to skip leg day it's important i know it's tough but you don't want to skip it uh leo convoy another five dollars <laughs> thank you leo you're being incredibly generous uh all NECA would really have to do is use better plastic and stop listening uh listing their stuff as non-durable goods and they'd be golden uh hey you know but that's how they get that's how they get around QC stuff is non-durable goods and putting adult collectible on it doesn't mean it has to go through all the the rigorous testing. And I wonder, does that lower the price? Like, is that why it probably does 32 bucks and a super mm -hmm. seven 45, 50, 60 bucks? Yeah, but even super seven stuff says adult collectible on it. True. True. But you know, but Super Seven is a you know, it's a it's 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 essentially still a mom and pop shop, you know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, they're they're an independent figure producer. It's incredible what they've done. You wouldn't guess they're an independent figure producer by the stuff they've made, but they're still, you know, a very still still a mom and pop kind of operation. Yeah, I will say I have had really good luck with the NECA uh, King Kong figure. The yeah. the I mess with that thing constantly. 
no mm-hmm. broken joints. They're still yeah. tight. He still yeah. holds his pose as well. Mm-hmm. And especially him because he kind of has those ratchet joints mm-hmm. uh, to kind of because it's a it's a bulky figure um, and it has supported. So I know there's concerns that maybe, uh, you know, this is a, it's a lot for this figure to stand on. Again, you'll probably use a flight stand. Um, but if they use a similar type of ratchet system or something like that, just to kind of give these legs extra support, uh, mm. I, I think it can come across really well. Yeah. Um, uh, Jake, that's how he looked in the comics. Again, that if, if I wanted a Goliath figure, like this is what I'd want. If I wasn't going to do the old, it was Kenner, right? The old Kenner line. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be this one. Uh, yeah. Uh, I got to take out my old Gargoyles issues. I thought I remember the comic being the same anime style the way the Batman Adventure co- uh, comic was. Um, I doubt uh, by Super 7 being small anymore, not with the amount of licenses they have. They have the licenses, but um, they're still a pretty small operation. I think you'd be surprised maybe how small that operation is. Yeah. Um, we... Uh, both John and I have friends that are that you know deal uh, with super with and are friends with Brian, and it's still a really small operation. Uh, believe it or not, believe it. Yeah, or not. they're still. It's only it's only very recently that they have moved to like um, where people ship out orders, like a third party shipper for their for their um, like wholesale vendors. Prior to that, the stuff was still going to. The Super Seven stores and got shipped out by you know Josh who used to do the wholesale stuff and now he's like the second hand man. Yeah, you're just like, hey, you just see Josh, he'll he'll get he'll let you set up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just mm-hmm. it's <laughs> like, like before Josh, it was Brian doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, uh, I collect some NECA joy toy acerin all prone to joint issues. You just need to be a little careful and immediately warm, stubborn joints. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I will agree, but I've had some like the NECA Superman, uh, 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 you know, Superman movie, Superman, and that one I'm still deathly afraid to really move too much because just how many people have had issues with that one. Uh, also talking about exactly, I think this would look awesome in an animated style, same as original Batman animated series toys. But uh, yeah, yeah. But again, I love the I I have a lot of those Kenner Batman animated series toys, but I also loved what um DC was DC Direct. Or, or I think it was DC collectibles by that point. The collectibles. What they did, I thought looked really good. Yep. Um I always thought the cape look was really cool, hoping for a variant. I'm sure they will. It's NECA. We're gonna get every damn variant possible if they can do it. it yep. Depending how well this thing is sold, I'm sure we'll get every var- variant. Um all right. Um <laughs> uh wholesale price is ridiculous uh too hey listen I, it's again there it, it is just their model i totally get it uh we i have bought their turtles figures in wholesale you're not saving that much off of them um but it is what it is super seven stuff is a little more expensive than NECA, but i find my super seven figures end up being my fa- favorites i would agree um their turtles line is amazing big fans both john and are big fans of the turtles line here they just do great stuff um but again NECA does good stuff too. And I think here this is a major retail release um, for $32.99. With that being a major retail release, there are going to be QC issues. But I think overall, I think it's a really awesome thing. The way that uh, apparently even this has exceeded NECA's expectations on the pre orders. And hopefully it does well enough that we will get all the main characters uh, from, from this show. And for the people that are big, um, gargoyles fans i'm really excited for them because uh it is crazy this is a really popular property at least i feel like it is that hasn't yeah. really had much if any merchandise for the show it's it's got to be one of the most in de- in demand series lines for mm-hmm. any sort of merch yeah because i mean outside of the kenner there was the you know applause sort of static figures mm-hmm um, but that's it. Yeah. You know, years, years, people have been asking for gargoyles reboot of toys. And then all of a sudden just drops on us with, <laughs> with no, with no pre-announcement, no yeah. anything. And it's like, here you go. You've been asking for it. Yeah. And this is, the, this is our best. Yeah. And also, so nobody, I think calls out well here. I feel like Disney has been particularly protective of gargoyles for some reason. Yeah. It's weird. It Disney's funky about, 
their animated series. Like even, you know, they have that 65 episode rule and where you take a show like DuckTales, which was a fantastic show, but they still canceled it after they at least they got the 75 episodes. Um, but it was, you know, wildly successful, had tons of great ratings. Uh, but still, they moved it around a lot and canceled it. Um, it's just it's what they do. It's what they do. Um, Nightmare uh, 10880. NECA said they already have five more characters ready to go with several more on the way. Uh, they had a Gargoyles comic that was written by Greg Weissman, and that was very good. And the only reason it got canceled is Disney raised the price on the license. Yeah, that's... Yeah, uh, uh, Darth Vader, more dismissive than protective. Yeah, it's just, it's weird. It is really weird how Disney approaches their IP. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, cause they, they jet, like they have really good IP, especially with their Disney afternoon stuff. And they really haven't done much with it. I mean, they let, uh, uh, friends, uh, is it Francisco, uh, the showrunner for DuckTales and then a rebooted DuckTales. It was this rare instance where Disney just gave them do whatever you want. And they create this huge cinematic universe around gargoyles even had, or I'm sorry, around Disney afternoon, even had a pretty cool gargoyles reference in the final episode um and uh but that was like the first time in forever that they really kind of let anything happen with that and even when talking with tad stones who was deeply involved with the disney afternoon created darkwing duck gizmo duck i uh, was a producer on gummy bears duck tales rescue rangers uh as well as showrunner and creator of darkwing duck uh he would go and he would talk to D- the disney execs like why like we need to reboot this like people are demanding this and they just don't want to do anything with it uh and it's so weird um i think that's what was really refreshing about the ducktales show it was this show that rebooted and and had so much love for the disney afternoon while being something new and and good uh so yeah it is shocking with a show like gargoyles um barely anything and we get this amazing figure out of nowhere uh uh, there you go. Here was, we live again. I watched all of DuckTales this weekend. That's impressive. You watched the whole show. Nicely done, Jay Griffiths. <laughs> That's impressive. Uh, you said you might watch it. Did you p- uh, d- pick it up at all or try to pick it up at all? I did start it. I did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What? How far did you get? Um, I'm only into the second episode. Okay. Um, right. But I, I dig it. I really like it. Right? Isn't it good? I, it's, it is. The, the voice acting is incredible. Like, they got amazing casts, uh, and it's really funny. Um, season one is so good. Like just the story, like you're once you start seeing the whole thing unfold, it's so good. Mm-hmm. But anyways, uh, probably not the comic you're thinking of Shinobi. There was one in the 2000s that was done by Weissman through another company. Uh, maybe Disney perceived a pr- parental backlash again about the cult satanic influence of gargoyles, which was crap when it first happened back in 95. I guess. I don't know. They did Hocus Pocus, which is a pretty damn dark show. <laughs> Sam Newsman, can we just get some Dick Tracy figures now that Disney is throwing out lights? You know, that's another thing. Like, Dick Tracy. Maybe it's because you can still find those Playmates Dick Tracy figures yeah. for, like, the nickel. <laughs> it's like, what well, same reason they don't make new next generation figures. <laughs> <laughs> but they're still trying to make next generation figures. But... I know. <laughs> um, but uh, it would be cool to get that was my one beef with the Playmates Dick Tracy line was the Dick Tracy didn't have his yellow trench coat. Yeah. It bugged me so much. I had the figure and it upset me so much. He didn't have the yellow trench coat so much. So I think I tried to make one out of yellow construction paper. <laughs> it looked terrible. Um, but it's funny. Like it was Batman 89, which was huge. And then Dick Tracy was like trying to essentially be the Batman of 1990. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was totally into it. Like I was there. Like I had the, I had the little fake watch and pretending it was a real Dick Tracy watch. And they had, they, we were releasing the cartoon and stuff like that. I was all in but that playmates figure still disappointing. If we ever do another <laughs> list of most disappointing figures of all time, I'd put that Dick Tracy on there. Cause it was so, so <laughs> no bummer. anyways, <laughs> Maybe NECA will write that wrong or, or Super 7 or whomever. We'll see. we'll see. All right. Well, there we go. Really excited about it. Again, I think some people have made some fair points about the QC issues with NECA. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see how this one turns out. I've had some good success with NECA some, and some not so good successes. So hopefully this one will be one of the good ones. Uh, I'd like to see a Dick Tracy Ultimates line. Hey, I again, 
it it's a fun there's a lot of fun you know it's a good rogues gallery uh yep. of interesting characters um satellite run is hard to come by now but weissman was planning to spin off a ton of ideas from it and barely got to his bad guy suicide squad like kind of it. they canned it that's a bummer uh, I wonder if this line will have variants like the old one did, the fire ones and ice ones. They kind of they've done that with the predator and aliens line, so I don't see why they. Mm -hmm. could. Oh, yeah, good. I bet they will. Oh, smash them. Um, uh, I use bulletproof's coat from cops for Tracy. Hey, that's uh, gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> um, uh, probably be a generic dick. I can see Warren Beatty being the jerk about using his likeness. Yeah, I don't really care for Warren Beatty, so it's fine. Give me a generic face. I don't need a Warren Beatty face. <laughs> um. Anyways, uh, did you pick up the Beast Saga figures, aka Battle Beasts? Um, I did not. Did you? No, no. They are. I think they're a little pricey for a two or two inch figure. I think that's what they are. Um, they're on. I think they're on Big Bad Toy Store. Are they on Big Bad? Yeah, they're there, right there. Yep. Oh, there we go. Let's see. So there's still a two-inch scale. I think so. Um, scroll down. Let's I mean, I, I understand they're imports, but two inches, two inches. That is a lot. Thirteen bucks. But if you're a Battle Beast fan, like a big Battle Beast fan, and you really, really want it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I've been clamoring for new battle beasts forever, mm -hmm. but that's a little pricey for for a two inch figure. But it's Takara, so that's that's who did the original, the yeah. original line, right? So, yep. so it's a oh, that's who that's who licensed it anyway. Yeah, licensed it to, yeah. So it is official. So again, if you're a battle beast fan, um, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, uh Jager says they look terrible. I think they look nice, but again, I I'm not a Battle Beast uh aficionado. I have a couple around here. I don't know, like I, but, <laughs> but um but I I have some friends that are big Battle Beast fans. Uh so I, again, if you're really if you've been clamoring for it, it's this is your chance. But mm -hmm. I do agree. $13 for a 2-inch figure? Yeah. That's a little it's a little spendy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're not the best. Goliath has some battle beast like figures. Uh, don't like the hole in the fist accessories. It's tough. You're right. It is tough when you have Goliath figures that have so much more playability, posability, and just kind of fun built into them. Yep. Um, that it does make these a little bit uh, a harder pill to swallow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like the Goliath. Uh, I think they're armorvores. Like the, the battle beast style figures, mm -hmm. they're they're really good. Um, the Hasbro Redline Cheetor is great. Big improvement on the line with that release. That's good to know. Um, I still haven't even opened my red releases because they just look bad, even in the package. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't returned them. I should. I probably should, but I think I got them. Maybe I'm from Amazon. I don't think let me return them at this point. But anyways, uh, we talked about that already. I total toy recon. I love because they have a lot of memes. But again, I don't know if anybody has seen. <laughs> Uh, this is in the first episode, but uh, wheels on a shopping cart, like <laughs> you know, <laughs> the uh, Winter Soldier uh, in Falcon uh, series. Um, uh, let's see. Let's. Oh, this I was really pumped about. Oh, that's cool. I haven't this seen this. A doing a one twelfth and one sixth scale super articulated where's waldo figure i freaking loved where's waldo as a kid i i dress up as waldo in uh second grade maybe for halloween and it was like the year everybody was it was like that year everybody was waldo for halloween yep. so i was like one of like at <laughs> least 15 waldos at my school um but still i didn't care and again they had bendy figures back then Mm -hmm. I think, um, and I had that one, but I was always disappointed we didn't have like a legit Waldo action figure. So Blitzway is riding around, uh, with with this set here, um, and it looks awesome. I really dig it. I pre-ordered it. It's on a uh, Big Bad Toy Store. It is a Blitzway, so it is pricey. 
Uh, let's see. Hey, well, Chris has been blocked. <laughs> Waldo? <laughs> Like where where is Waldo porn? I don't know about. Yeah, it. now you just got to find him. That's the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. There we go. So it is pricey. So there's a one six. It's one eighty nine. I didn't go for the one six scale. So that was a little big. But the one twelve, I did go for the deluxe with all these accessories and the display book and all this cool stuff. Blitzway is doing the um, Inspector Gadget too, right? They are yeah. Um, and it has like a magnet in there, so the accessories like just attached with the mag- magnets. Oh, that's pretty cool. Which is really cool. Um, huh. so I I I I think it's really neat. And it is, yeah. A little like postcard thing. <laughs> <laughs> It's so cool. Like again, I you know, this is this is pure nostalgia for me. Yeah. Um it it's and- so it's so like um that late 80s early 90s everybody connects to it kind of like um yeah. Carmen San Diego or something like that where it wasn't only at at home, it was in school. Yeah. Yep. 100%. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um Again, it's pricey, but still, it looks amazing. It's a blitz. It's like an imported uh, Blitzway's uh, Japanese as well, isn't it? Like Hot Toys. I think so. Um, so it's an import, really high quality stuff. Um, so it does come <laughs> with a bit of a price tag. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sam, the Inspector Gadget release earlier is quite possibly one of the best figures released this year so far. So. If it's on the same caliber as the Inspector Gadget, well, then I think this could be a really darn good figure. Uh, but old school Shinobi, where's Waldo sitting in the warehouse until he comes down in price? <laughs> hey, we'll see. We'll see, old school. We'll see. Uh, Waldo is DreamWorks? Maybe. I have no idea who owns that nowadays. I feel like I don't even really see where's Waldo books anymore. Like maybe some of the other big books from, from our childhood. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but I, because I would love to buy some more. Like if I find a vintage one, uh, I'll pick it up. But I'd love to to have more just to share with my kids. I know my kids have really dug them. Um, but anyway, uh, had uh, the Blitzway Inspector guy pre-ordered but canceled. Eventually, couldn't bring us to pay what they wanted for. You know, I haven't pre-ordered because it, it looks amazing. But I have the Galoob one, and the Galoob one is still amazing. It still looks incredible, and I. Yep. It's one of those things where it's like that is still a great looking Inspector Gadget, and I don't feel like I need another Inspector Gadget. But for this Waldo, I have always wanted a great Waldo action figure, and this is this is kind of filling that that hole in my collection. So, um, Will you uh, like move him around your toy room, like peeking around the corner every uh, every day? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, like uh, like whenever I do on the shelf. Video, yeah, whenever I do a video, I'll just have yeah. it spot and just kind of be like a different game you know that like a sub game and <laughs> that's a great idea it what? is yeah. uh jager says yes there's a 2019 series made by dreamworks it's awful well that sounds about right <laughs> uh, uh right on jay i have the galoob gadget too one of my faves of all time yeah it is it is incredible considering it came out in 84 85 whenever that thing came out mm-hmm. um it looks incredible. Like it looks like it jumps right off the screen. All of the accessories. It is one of those vintage toys that is expensive, but well worth the price. If you can get a complete, you know, unbroken one. Uh, mine is not complete. I'm missing a few pieces, but I got it a lot cheaper than I would pay for a complete one. Uh, our mutual uh, toy seller friend, Keith. Uh, it's just one of those, like Keith's one of those amazing toy sellers that has everything. And just every toy show, just have a bunch of like goodies. I was like, damn, I've always wanted that one. All right, I'm going to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's usually really cheap, relative. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm getting it for show. For show, that's a great, great for you, Alex and Sam. My love of Gloob gadget is why I picked the Blitzway gadget. Well, hey, that is high praise, Sam, uh, for that uh, figure. But still, really pumped about this one, even though I do know it is is a, t- a high uh, price tag on there. And then, last thing here is Toyshiz. Give, give Toyshiz a follow. 
friend of the channel. If he, I mean, I'm sure most people here do because he always has the news like super, super fast. Uh, but these Space Jam figures from Moose Toys, which I was like, who the hell is Who's Moose Toys? Toys? So I click on Moose yeah. Toys and I'm like, oh, Moose Toys. They're an Australian toy company. And again, maybe because I have young children at home. We are huge fans of Bluey. If you are a, if you have kids that watch kids shows, a lot of them are terrible. Absolutely <laughs> God awful shows that you want to like, just gouge your eyeballs out. Cause it's so awful. But Bluey is one of the best programs on TV today for kids and grownups. Their episodes are really funny. They're only like seven minute episodes. They're emo like they're they're emotional, beautiful, funny. Like it hits on so many levels. An amazing program out of Australia. But they do the Bluey toy line, uh, so they have the Bluey figure. So that's uh, that to me is like the one thing I know them from is just uh, their Bluey toys. Uh, since they're an Australian company, um, but I guess in the plunderings and a couple other things. Uh, but huh. for me, I was just like Bluey, man. Freaking love Bluey. And our, our kid, my six year old and three year old love Bluey as well. But anyway, so they, that's Moose Toy. So that's probably what they're maybe what plunderings and them. So, but they're doing these figures here. Um, but I, I will say, uh, uh, it's another one of those toy lines from the 90s that was clearance to high heaven. Yeah. Like you can find Space Jam toys, the original line. <laughs> everywhere i have a box of space jam toys that i bring the toy shows <laughs> that nobody has bought for years it's it's i was gonna say that you have like it's a tub isn't it a tub it's a tub of them um and nobody has bought them <laughs> uh so i don't know maybe the space jam movie coming out will will make those uh valuable but they're not now so i i do find it as a toy collector uh, these toys, um, maybe the kids will dig them. Uh, we'll see. It's coming out on HBO Max, I think, right? So, mm -hmm. um, again, love Looney Tunes, love the characters. So, always cool to see those toys on there. Um, but yeah, don't know how well the, the these toys will do for Moose Toys. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Who knows? <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I have a feeling right. it's going to be a repeat of Space Jam, the original. I think so. I think so. I don't want to say it because, again, Moose Toys, they're doing the Bluey stuff. We love we love the Bluey. Uh, LOL at Bluey. Uh, Riley Bob. Bluey! My kids love Bluey. Again, for the parents, maybe their kids are watching. Sit down and watch it with them. Fantastic show. Like, one episode made me cry. It's really great. It's a great show. I cry really easy. That's how it's like. <laughs> uh, anyway, so then this last bit of news: uh, NECA teasing the regular Shredder from TMNT Two Secret of Ooze. I am more excited about this Shredder than the Super Shredder, personally. Was the the Super Shredder wasn't one of the um the was it like a loot crate or whatever the the box figures were? Um. No, no, Super the, Shredder is a regular release. He was a regular release. I think they released him on the website. He's showing with Walmart. Um, and then now there's a Super Shredder variant, which is like the Shadow variant, which is kind of the Chef Boyardee. Oh, yeah, uh, that's right. Black variant. Yeah. Um, but this one is just the normal looking Shredder. Or, well, not, but the, the, the two versions. So he has a cooler, more like serrated edged helmet and these little gold panels and stuff. Um, <laughs> So personally, I'm more excited about this shredder than the super shredder, and uh, really pumped that they're releasing this one. Uh, Very cool. Oh, they've done a release date yet? Oh, sorry. Uh, same. I want that shredder to do that release. I don't know. I don't know if they do. Um, are they not a Kevin Nash fan? Listen, it's not about the Kevin Nash. I get super shredder, but the super shredder is literally like the last two minutes of the movie, <laughs> which is cool. Not don't get me wrong, but. Even as a kid, I was like, okay, cool, Super Shredder. But it, like, if I'm trying to recreate the scenes of TMNT 2, I want to just like the normal looking Shredder. And they never did like a movie Shredder. So again, I love the movie one version of Shredder that NECA did. 
I'm excited they're doing this one as well. Uh, Sam, he's been cue the NECA more QC, uh, C, uh, QC. <laughs> oh, uh, what's the difference from Shredder and two? Yeah, again, it's a different helmet because remember at the end of one spoiler alert, you know, uh, uh, Casey Jones smashes him in the trash compactor. Allah in his first, like he was killed in the original comic book, and I think that's how he was killed, same way. Um, in the first issue. He was killed in the first issue, wasn't he, of the original Eastman comic book? I, I don't yeah. know that. I I don't know that answer. I'm pretty sure I have I have the collected trade paperback of that. And his death is the same. Well, he dies in the comic book the same way they kill him, or you know, supposedly kill him at the end of the yeah. first movie. Uh, but he comes back, so he has a new helmet that's like more aggressive with like serrated edges. It looks really cool. Um, so he is different. So show. Uh, Print Rabbit Spirit of Splinter was the Luke Craig exclusive. Yes, and the next one is the Danny figure. Uh, yeah, Buzzsaw helmet should be neat. Excited for that. Uh, would Shredder be a Walmart exclusive? If so, uh, yeah. I mean, most of the movie figures are Walmart exclusives, and the Toon figures are Target exclusives. And I will say, having to go there is is a bummer. But yeah. <laughs> having any Walmart exclusive—that's the tough part. About Walmart exclusives, like you have to go into Walmart and. You know, no offense to Walmart. I, I shop at Walmart because there's just things that you have to get at Walmart sometimes. But I, I, every time I walk into a Walmart, this is the feeling I get. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe even more so, it's just like, it's more maybe this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, yeah, and the face sculpt looks really good, too. That is on uh, their Instagram. Um. Second Shredder's helmet looks like he's getting hair tied. <laughs> That's a good one. T Ponder. Oh man. All right. John, it's time to stump you. I hope you're ready. All right. Let's real, do it. We're gonna just gonna stump the hell out of you real quick. This oh, one boy. is from Jay Griffiths. And the rest are gonna be from me. <laughs> from you. From me, I got a, I got some accessories here. So we only had one submission from last week to this week. That was Jay's other Jay, right. DJ. So we're gonna show that one, and then I have four accessories to get the full five here. Okay. So if anybody else wants to submit your stump John submissions, geekdadlife at gmail.com. Send them in so that we can have a full yep. segment. Figures, accessories, parts, whatever, whatever. Mine are all accessories, so I hope you're ready for that, John. <laughs> this looks like an accessory, too. We'll see how it goes. But let me share. First share, Jay Griffiths, regular contributor to the show. This was his submission. I have no idea what this is. I have, yeah. Right off the bat, I, I have no idea. I have no it idea. Looks, it kind of looks like a duck. I was thinking maybe is it a turtle thing because it had the little mask kind of. Yeah, like it maybe it would go on like a front of a motorcycle or something, like in front of the handlebars or. Yeah. Another one I don't know. You guys are terrible with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Anybody in the chat? Does anybody know what this is? I don't know. All right. What's no what's next? Um, Indiana Jones Tiki Tiki Mask of Doom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did get it in a TMNT lot. It looks TMNT esque, but some of that newer TMNT stuff, like that la the most recent line, I really have no idea. Yeah, like um, I can't even remember what that line is called. <sighs> Uh, ri rise of the shell or something. I don't know. Yeah, or just rise. Is it rise of the turtles or rise of the turtles? It was awful. The toys are awful. Uh, <laughs> Trump's true face. <laughs> <laughs> the colors right. The colors right. <laughs> Ducktales <laughs> after dark. <coughs> Sam Newsman, very playmates ish. It uh, is. is it even the plastic looks very playmates ish? I'm gonna. Yep. It's a later turtles toy of some sort. Yeah, maybe maybe the 2012 line, the the first Nickelodeon series, but 
Well, Jay says Rise of Dominion, but I've had it at least nine years. Hmm. But it's before the rise of TMNT, but it could. I think you're right, John. Maybe it's 2012 TMNT. Count. I'm, I'm, I'm going to think on that this this week. <laughs> um, I'll find it. Maybe next. Maybe next time we meet, I'll have an answer. All right. Now here's mine. You ready for mine? Yep. I set it up just like how we set it up at a toy show. When when a dealer will come up to John and be like. <laughs> Hey, I got I got some accessories here. Do you know what these belong to? And it's usually in a little box like this. Yeah. So, yeah all right. This first one. Because and and this is really I'm taking advantage because if I know where to put these two, I'm just gonna sell them. So really, this is, this is a true reenactment of how it goes when we ask John at a toy show or something like that. Anyways, here we go. All right. Uh, this first one. This kind of purple axe. Uh, I know what that is. Let me think about it. All right, we'll come back to it. Come back to it. All right. Uh this it's a rip cord of some sort. Oh, that's Orcos. Oh, is this Orcos? Yeah. <gasps> okay, I wasn't sure. I was I knew it was Motu, but I couldn't remember which rip cord it was. Yep, that's Orcos. All right, Orcos. That's good because Orcos kind of valuable if he's complete. Yeah, if you have any of his coins. Yeah. Yeah, I need. I don't have any of his coins, but maybe now I'll just hold this until that. All right, one out of, and maybe you'll get this one still. So one out of one out of three so far. All right, here's another one. Oh, that's sectars. Do you know who? I figured sectars, but do you know who? Um, not offhand. Okay, no. All right, think about. It. I'll give it to you though, because it, it there's definitely sectars. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Um. Uh, what's his name? General. I need to think about it. Okay. Think about it. Think about it. But I'll give it to you though. All right, and then this last one. It's another piece of armor. That's not um. That's not Remco Conan, is it? It seemed like a Remco kind of Motu. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's if it's not Remco Conan, it's definitely, you know, um, knockoff. You know, um, anything dollar store eighties Motu body, because a lot of them switch places or switch mm -hmm. um, molds. Like if it says anything on the back, like Sunco or Suco. There are no no markings, no stamps, no stamps to be had. Hmm. But this was in a collection that included some Remco, you know, Motu style knockoff figures. Yep. So it's like Galaxy Warriors, or I tell you what, if it's if it's not Remco, but just um, you know any other brand like Sun Gold or Suco or dollar store or whatever i sell the i get 15 bucks a piece for the armors well that's i'll just list it then just put it up. yeah but well, but if it is a conan armor it's a lot more money than that oh really yeah uh well let's look some of the guesses here remco knockoff gear dartherian says tenko and the guardians of magic a lot of sun man guesses no, that's not Sun Man. But Tenko and the Guard. Let's look that up real quick. Shit, that's Tenko and the Guardians of Magic. <laughs> Definitely not Brave Star. <laughs> <laughs> Tenko and the Guardians of Magic. Tenko and the Guardians of Magic. Boys? Is that like um? What was it? Mm, it's like a. That's like um the Galoob um what are they called? The Chira line that was a knockoff. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um, yep. Golden Girls. Yep, Golden Girls. Moon Man and the Protectors of Sunrise. All right, let's... <laughs> are they just making this stuff up now? <laughs> <laughs> let's see, Moon Man. 
and the protectors of sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, old school. It's nothing there. Nothing there. <laughs> I didn't even know that Darth Erin was just joking. Uh, Galaxy Warriors. Uh, that's that's B. Arthur's armor. <laughs> Made that up, Jay. Okay, it's not it's not a uh, Conan armor. It's probably just um not muscle warriors. I can't oh, remember right. what the heck they're called. Galaxy warriors. Yeah, galaxy warriors. Let's look. Let's see if we can find some similar ones here. Yeah, yeah. Let's see, galaxy warriors. Oh, it definitely is. All right there, it is right there, isn't it? This this uh, lion dude. Yep. Yeah. But it isn't necessarily just his because they kind of swapped the armor and the shields. Yeah, because look at the dude, and yeah, they lot. weren't very they weren't very consistent when they packaged the figures with armor and yep. shields. Looks like yeah, a lot of people had like maybe one of those. Mm -hmm. Yep. So boom, there you go. Galaxy Warriors. All right. Uh you were right with sectar. <coughs> Sectars. A lot of people have said the right answer in the chat. You said Is it General Spider Spidrax? That is what everybody said in the chat. So I'm gonna give that one to you. All right, so you got two. You got two out of four. That purple axe is bugging me. Like it's um You want to come back to this purple axe. I know. Like it's um, Playmates or one of those lines that was like short lived, like um, Little Dracula or something like that. Really? It's a Little Dracula accessory? No, but I, I'm like comparing it to one of those lines, mm -hmm. like something that was one series, like less than 10 figures. Yeah. Hmm. Or is that a Turtles thing? Uh, it does have it's got I've never seen a turtle figure I, I don't know this one didn't Pirates of Dark Water Ooh, Pirates of Dark Water maybe that sounds legit let's see Pirates of Dark Water Pirates of Dark Water toys Pirates of Dark Water Has Hasbro did that line Nobody seems to be having a purple axe so far. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see it. Yeah. There's a it looks like a complete set. Nothing really matching up to that. So so no, I'm Pirates of Dark Water. <laughs> Mickey Mouse's ex. <laughs> Mickey Mouse's ex. Ah. Um, mm, yeah, I don't know. That one's just going to be a mystery then. Yep. <laughs> Minnie's meat tender. <laughs> uh, uh, classic. I still think it's from Moon Man and the Protectors of Sunrise. Yeah. This is new series that old school shinobi is working on. So be yep. on for that. <laughs> Starting like a, a trend here. Everybody's it's just going to catch on. Oh, wait, wrong one. Sorry, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. All right. <laughs> I, I don't think this is Toxic Avengers because those are always like glow in the dark or something like that. Yeah, no, it's not Toxic Avengers. So this this the collection that it came from was very 80s. So no 90s in this collection. It was all 80s stuff. Okay. Uh, like He-Man, Transformers, um, Rambo, uh, uh, some Galaxy Warriors, um, all 80s. And that's hmm. there's no 90s in this collection at all. Not a single 90s piece. Star Wars stuff. So this was purely 80s. So I'm guessing this has to be from the 80s. I'll find it. I'll figure it out. All right. Well, look, it's we don't have an official victory. Talk to Bionic 6. Uh, 
<laughs> we'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, uh, that will do it for this episode of Toy Geeks. John, anything else before we close it out? Uh, nope. I'm tired. Tired. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good place to end it here. Uh, again, join us Sunday nights at nine o'clock. Uh, we will have an episode nine o'clock next Sunday, but it will be pre-taped since it is Easter Sunday. We will be out. I will be out of town at least. Um, and then uh, the next episode will be on Friday, April 9th, nine p.m. Eastern. We will be chatting about at Hasbro Pulse Fan Fest. Uh, you'll see a link here on the channel, youtube.com slash geekdadlife. If you haven't already, hit the like button on this video. And if you want to see when these episodes drop, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button and that bell icon. Thank you, everybody that's in the chat. You are what make this show special. So always love hearing from you all. And John... Uh, let's see uh, another great live stream. Happy birthday, Jay, and happy anniversary, John. Hit the like button before you leave. Indeed, hit that like button. Thank you. Uh, good night. Have a great week from Jack. Now, yes, good night, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. And until next time, hasta luego and goodbye.